Okay, so let's start the, the second talk. Uh, so by uh, Guillaume Rémy from uh, Colombia, and who will talk about uh, UV uh, informal field theory. Okay, well, first I'd like to thank Michel for inviting me to speak here. Thanks all for coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll be telling you about this uh, result uh, uh, we've had with my uh, collaborators at Columbia, so Promit, Shin, and uh, Yi. And I'll be explaining to you some um, what are these conformal blocks of Liouville theory using uh, probability. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you a few slides. First three slides will be uh, kind of motivate the problem and uh, explain to you uh, what is Liouville theory in physics. and uh, so how did this story start? So it started with Polyakov in one of the landmark papers of string theory in 81, which is the first place this level theory was introduced. And what Polyakov was trying to understand is what is a canonical random surface? How do you do summation over two-dimensional surfaces? And the way he proceeds is he says, well, uh, give yourself a metric tensor, so Riemannian metric tensor on your surface. And so you have some surface S. And you write the tensor like this. So G is a fixed background metric. And this is just some function, a positive function. So we write E to the phi, with gamma is just positive parameter. And Polyakov understood that the correct random geometry corresponds to putting a law on this phi. That's given, so uh, this, the law of this phi in physics would be given to you by uh, some formal definition, so these, this infinite dimensional path integral. So it's an expectation of any function of the level field, the phi, is so at the physics level of rigor is given by a summation over all maps from your surface to R of some energy functional, which contains, so you have two terms. The first one just kinetic energy, it's like the most basic term you can throw in any energy functional. And so if you had only this term, then phi would be Gaussian free field, it would just be free field theory. But neural theory also contains a uh, nonlinear term, so this uh, e to the x here, which is the level potential. In a sense, it corresponds to re-weighting the law of your field by the total volume, because then the, your integrated over s is quantity. Um, right. And you have one, so one from metal parameter, gamma in zero two that's linked to the, it's called in physics, the, it's a central charge after, it's linked to a central charge by a uh, simple formula. Okay, so, so this is just uh, integration over surface of this, uh, of the gradient and the uh, integrate the. No, 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 it's the, it's the, it's you integrate just the, the measure to integrate over the surface. Capital X is a function of yeah. capital X. That's correct, yes. And is this natural that the coefficient of phi gamma also appears in the definition of the distribution of phi? I mean, it's kind of unusual. Yeah, it's like, that's how it works. You, you, uh, of course, you could absorb it in here, but it's like, uh, you, you, it's, you, you define, so Liouville theory itself is, is defined with, depends non-trivially on this parameter gamma. And then the random geometry it produces, you take it into it like gamma times phi. It's, uh, that's how it's done, yeah. So the next part of the story in physics is, uh, was done by Belavin, Polyakov, Zamochikov in another landmark paper in E4 where they introduced the framework of conformal field theory, which is they tried to leverage um, the conformal invariance of some quantum field theories to uh, to gain some solvability and be able to say something about this level theory. So, uh, more concretely, they can, in principle, compute the following observables, which you should think as of, uh, in probabilistic terms, you should ch think of this as like a joint Laplace transform. You see, you, you choose uh, some endpoints on the surface, and then you exponentiate, right, you take the exponential with some weight of the field at these points. So, in principle, if you were to know how to compute all these quantities for any number of points on any surface, you would have completely solved, or probabilistically, you would have completely determined the law of the level field. And the framework of uh, CFT, uh, so Belavin Polyak of Zemoshikov gave you a program to do this, which has two steps. So it's called 
confirm your bootstrap program. So step one is you compute the most basic correlation function. So it corresponds to having the surface be the sphere and choosing three points. Well, three is most basic on the sphere because it's the number of points you need to fix Mobius maps on the sphere. And okay, that's step one. And step two is then by this sort of, I, I wrote it like schematically here, but by this type of conformal bootstrap e equation, in principle, you can uh, compute higher order correlations, so higher genus or more points, you can compute them uh, by some integrating the three point function on the sphere against some fundamental objects called the conformal block that are in principle only s depend only on conformal invariance on this, if you heard the word maybe this, uh, this VRS or algebra. And the three point function for liberal theory of t on the sphere was in physics, the physicists, uh, Don Arto and Zalmoshikov, Zalmoshikov found a formula for this. Um, so now, uh, I'm going to move on to explaining, okay, how, so where does the probability start? What has been done so far in probability and understand, yes, go ahead. So, so sorry, uh, isn't the three point function uh, completely determined up to constant and the four point function is where the... That's exactly right, okay, let me explain. It's determined up to constant, you're totally right, that the dependence on the points zi of a three point function is uh, you just, you can, if you have three points on the sphere, you can map them by Mobius map to zero, one, and infinity. So the dependence on the points is easy to figure out. But what's completely non-trivial is the structure constant, like the exact value of the constant. This is what's given by the DOZZ formula. If you go move on to higher points, say so you take a four point function on the sphere, then it only depends on the cross ratio of the four points. But then the dependence on the cross ratio is non-trivial. It will be determined by conformal blocks. So, so let me now say a bit, what are the probabilistic tools we're going to use and what has been done so far in this program? So basically, the first paper going in this direction was David Coupier and Rod Vargas. And uh, they construct rigorously, give a rigorous probabilistic definition to this quantity on the sphere using two tools. So first one is a Gaussian free field on the sphere. And second one is this Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure, which formally corresponds to exponentiating the Gaussian free field. Um, and it ha you have to use some smoothing and normalization procedures. The, the GFF is uh, singular, so when you exponentiate it, it, it requires some care. And so you should think of these functions, basically, and this is now well understood, that these observables now have a definition, rigorous probabilistic definition, as some functional of, basically it's a complicated functional of the GFF also involving this uh, exponential measure. Um, and the step one of solving the CFT is now completed, which is that this probabilistic definition was shown to be equal to this DOZZ formula. So, in the so it's for three point on the sphere, the probabilistic definition is now proved to be equal to the proposed formula in physics, the DOZZ formula. So this was a pretty big through, uh, big breakthrough in 2017. Right, so now what we want to do is, well, we want to do the step two of the program, which is we want to understand this uh, next, this uh, step I have here, these conformal bootstrap equations. So now I'm going to write things more precisely. Um, so here was the equation it looks like. So I should say, in this talk now on, I'm going to specialize my surface to be the torus. So I'm going to work in the torus topology. So let's basically just think of the torus as a parallelogram, okay, where you identify sides. And I have this, uh, the, co the corner here is the modular parameter. So it's the tau, tau lives upper half plane. And there's a convenient change of variable that I'll be using throughout the talk, which is introduce variable q equals i pi tau. And now this lives in the disk. Okay. Now let me comment what's on this slide. So this is for this is the conformal bootstrap equation written to compute which quantity. So this is the one point function of Liouville theory on the torus. So if it's like the most 
the first non-trivial quantity on the torus, the easiest correlation on the torus, and in and, and, and it has a probabilistic definition using uh, GMC and GFF, but I, I won't be using it during this talk. Go ahead. Who's alpha? Your alpha is arbitrary. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, it's going to be alpha is a mark point of the correlation. It's going to be a parameter. It's the same as these alphas. Which I didn't get either. What was so? Where is gamma here? That's what I'm looking So gamma is everything. It's if you want every, it, it's fixed. Yes, I'll put my. Let me take some time to explain parameters. Gamma is fixed yeah, that's correct. And every quantity you see on the slide depends on gamma. It's like fixed once in, it's linked to the central charge, if you've heard this word. No, I understand, but it's one. Yeah, central charge, six. I also use, let me keep this on the board. I also have the Q parameter, if you've seen it. Alpha, you just think of it as being real, but there'll be some restrictions on it, but I'll just put it real for now. Um, Right, so this, so, sorry, go ahead. Why do you move to the torus when we're on the sphere? Uh, uh, the sphere is more to present the first step of the program. You see, the compute three point on the sphere. Once you've done this, then step two, the easiest case of step two would be to solve four point on the sphere or one point on the torus. Basically, either you understand how you can reduce genus or you understand how you can reduce number of points. These are like two basic operations. And we've been focusing our work on the torus. It's slightly, uh, I think, it contains all non-trivial uh, difficulties, but has fewer parameters. So it's. Uh, so just to make sure yeah. on the sphere, they could compute the three-point function, but not the one-point function. No, on the sphere, there's no one-point function. It's, uh, so the, the, let me explain this also: is that the minimum number of points you can choose is the number of points you need to fix Mobius maps. So on the sphere, is three because you can, if you have three points on the sphere, you can map them by unique Mobius map to zero, one, infinity. Well, on the torus, the, the most basic correlation is the one point, because you just need to fix translations. So you just mark a point, then it's well defined. That's how, that's the philosophy. So by doing that, you'll be able to compute the four point function on this piece. Yes, by the same, this is uh, a future direction of our work, but we haven't put effort into it yet. We have some ideas. I'll talk about this at the end. Okay, so let me comment again. Well, what is there in this equation? So how do you compute this one point function? So this is still conjecture which is, you, in, you have P, capital P here is just some uh, integration of uh, just uh, the integration variable. You have Q, so this C is the, C gamma is the DOZZ formula. This is the three point function on the sphere, right? And these two functions are the conformal blocks. So they're like the most severe uh, function at the core of the conformal field theories. In principle, uniquely specified by a uh, just the conformal invariance. And my goal, so the goal today will just be, I'm actually going to now, uh, well, keep in mind this bootstrap e equation, but the, the main focus of the talk is could be understand this. I'm going to give you a very concrete definition of what is this function. And it would also be basically, I'm going to introduce some law correlated fields and I'm going to produce a functional that's equal to this function. And the, right, this, this is the, this will be the goal of the talk. So you wrote all parameters, but not P, so P makes it on the sphere, but P is just, you see, at this moment, P is just some uh, integration of this. This is just a real integral over P. And each function appearing here depends on, non-trivially on P. That's, is this, so is there any more questions on the, and finish the, so this was just for the motivation, and now I'm gonna explain really the, Right probabilistic definitions. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so, so now I'm going to introduce some uh, law correlated fields. There are going to be one dimensional that I'm going to work with to be able to, to produce this definition of the conformal block. So um, I have a, th I'm going to, and I'm going to keep all my definition on this board. So you, uh, you stay. So I have a, a field Y on zero one, but it's actually more, you should think of it as living on the circle. I parameterize the circle by, so if you have x, uh, x in, in zero one, then I have my field that, uh, right, this is at two i pi x, I have uh, the field here is y is um, of x, okay? And what is the covariance of my field? It's just a uh, log correlated. 
So it's also this. So this is a one-dimensional Gaussian process leading on basically on zero one, but it's pu with periodic boundary conditions. You can think of it also as a restriction of a certain uh, Gaussian free field on living on a disk. And so another way, maybe this is the way that the easiest to understand what this object is, whatever way you think of it, is you just take uh, Fourier modes and put IID Gaussians in front of each Fourier modes, which is just some, so there's this square root uh, normalization. Um, right, and so as you may know, these log correlated fields are just living in the space of distributions, are not uh, point-wise defined. And if you want to smooth your field, one convenient thing to do is just, with what's on my slide, I can just truncate this series at capital N here. So if you truncate the Fourier series, then at every fixed capital N, you would have a smooth field. And then as uh, capital N goes to infinity, you would converge in space of distributions. Right. So I'll try, maybe I'll copy my covariance. So now let's keep going. I have to do something a little more complicated because these, uh, the, as you saw, the, we're, living, we're working with a torus. So we expect everything to have a non-trivial dependence on the modular parameter, the tau. Okay? So I'm going to, in a sense, twist uh, the covariance of the previous slide, the previous field y. Now it becomes y tau. And now y tau, uh, basically, so one way to think of it is you start with the field Y and you add an independent field that's continuous, F tau, but that depends on the modular parameter. And you can also, you also have a direct covariance for Y tau, so it contains this uh, Jacobi theta function in covariance. So in a sense, it's like, uh, how does, um, well, yes, uh, Yes, what I wanted to say is that this field also, you can add, is this a natural object? Uh, it turns out it is also, the, if you start with a Gaussian free field on the torus and restrict it to one of the loops, to this, basically this loop 0, 1, up to a constant you would get uh, this covariance. So it's also, this one dimensional field is also natural in a sense, it's a restriction of the Gaussian free field to a loop of the torus. And this, when you compute covariance, you do random theta function, okay. So basically we have, let me write y of x equals y of x plus f tau, where this is, um, right, this is a continuous field, but that contains a non-trivial dependence on modular parameter. Right, so this is the y tau. Is there any questions on this definition? Why do you want to play with tau? You just want one example for which you can calculate things, right? So, could you just uh, tau what? Tau <laughs> one for your talk? Uh, yes, I could be. Yes, I could. But I don't think that makes things easier to. Yeah, I could fix a value. Yes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, uh, define the Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure. So, so what, sorry, go, go ahead. Why was F tau so much better than Y when you look at the formula? Uh, okay, let me explain. Thing, is Why is it more regular? Okay, yes. The reason is you're doing, so F tau also has definition with some, you're also putting Gaussians in front of Fourier modes, but now notice you have Q here. My Q is in the disk. So it's converging very fast, this, uh, you see, you have... Oh, I see, I see. So Q equals zero would correspond... Yeah, pretty much, yeah. One would correspond to the... the yeah. Process. And these are all, all the Gaussians I'm drawing, are all ID from one another. I'm like re-sampling new Gaussians and putting them in front of these uh, Fourier modes in this way. Uh, so now I'm going to, maybe you're all already familiar with this, but I'm going to explain to you how you define, so this is general procedure of how you define the measure associated 
to a log correlated field, and in my case, I'm going to need it for my field y tau, but this is more general. So formally, what we want to do is we want to define for a fixed gamma in 0, 2, we want to define a, a, um, a random measure, so it's random, the randomness is in the field y, and it's, uh, it's going to be a measure on 0, 1, formally corresponding to exponentiating this field. But since it lives in the space of distributions to do this, we have to do a cutoff, so for instance, truncate the Fourier series. Uh, and then if you want this to have a limit uh, as n goes to infinity, you need to uh, renormalize. So just here just corresponds to divide by the expectation of the object. So you can, everything's Gaussian, right? So I compute the expectation and I divide by the expectation. So now this is the renormalized measure. And it's, it's well understood that uh, this measure converges um, so I have the, the statement. This is also where the constraint on gamma appears. If you take gamma beyond 2, you would have totally different behavior and doesn't really correspond to anything related to conformal field theory. But so this is, and just for these statements, like you, you can have a look at uh, Nathaniel Beresik, he wrote a very short paper of 12 pages uh, proving this, uh, this convergence. Uh, it's an easy proof. Yeah. So build it differently. You, if you had exponential of gamma or gamma over two, uh, y itself, this is yeah. all defined in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the same. Yes, that's totally. Yes, that's a. Uh, then you would have a smooth. Then. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, I guess I could have put just y on this slide. This is only treat. You just need to treat the singular part, which is only contained in y. Then you can add this by hand. But that's couldn't you just say that y is the restriction of the usual quantum gravity? On, I mean the. Yeah. Thing the circle, right? Yeah, that's. And then it's a consequence of the fact that you. Yeah, it's diff. I mean, I mean, uh, so this is known. Yeah. Okay, so now this is the the punchline of the talk, which is so. What is a conformal block? And now it has very compact definition, just using the 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 uh, the objects I've uh, introduced before. So let me explain this. It's going to be a moment of Gaussian multiplicative chaos. So you just integrate a Gaussian multiplicative chaos measure, and you just add in your, in your integrand, you have two extra terms that appear. This, this term here is an insertion. So in, usually in this, you might be used to recognizing uh, an insertion of the form x to the minus to some power. But here it's theta because our field is correlated with theta. Right, but uh, um, so this is insertion, and this alpha basically also corresponds to on the correlation function of a torus. You would also be have, yeah, you would have these marked points. So and then this there's this p dependence, which is basically the remember the p was the parameter of the this bootstrap integral. So the conformal block has to depend non-trivially on p, and the, it appears like this by throwing this into the uh, so. But and you take a, yeah, fra and then you, you have this, this random variable, you take a moment, compute the moments. So this outputs some, some function. And the main theorem of the talk will be, well, this function equals the conformal block of Zelmochikov that uh, was found in like the first papers on uh, conformal field theory. Mm, more kinds. Yeah, so you really, I, I outline here, you really have four parameters, but that play a totally different role. You have basically the central charge parameter, the, so this, this weight of the mark point you're computing, the, the, the integration parameter of the bootstrap integral, and then the modular parameter of the torus. And you depend non-trivially on these four parameters. Can, can you remind us what was Zamorushnikov? Oh, this is next slide. So I'm going to, okay, I'm not, what I'm going to do the rest of the talk will be, I'm not going to explain to you what were the known, what was the conformal block, so before we introduce this definition, so I'm going to explain a few definitions, then the main results will be, well, they're the same function. Mm -hmm. And so this, and also this z here is just normalization. It's like, you can compute it explicitly, but it's uh, some explicit gamma functions, but it's a little complicated, so I didn't put it, but it's defined by, uh, so you normalize, so this holds. And I'm, again, I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Notations are pretty heavy, so I'm completely lost. This Q now is not exponentialized by. Yeah, it's still. Why, why is it? No, yes, it's still. I, I haven't changed notations. So, what you 
<laughs> so how can it be between zero and one? I'm just uh, so oh the two two was okay. I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's modulus of Q, which is between zero. Oh, uh, it's yeah. modulus between zero. I guess. Oh, okay. You just make. Is it more questions? Is it? This, this is okay. This definition is much more compact than the ones that I'm going to explain now. So this just is, I'm going to explain it. So let's let's move on to what was the original definition. So Zamoshikov, uh, it's called Zamoshikov's recursive formula. So I'm actually not going to use in the rest of the talk just to so you see what what these things look like. Okay, just give a flavor. So from from first principles of conformal field theory and Vyasa algebra. Zamoy is uh, able to, so you, you use, first thing is you view the conformal block now as a formal series in Q. So this, as, let's view it as function of Q. So this is some series, okay, you can write, it's going to be 1, let's say, plus a n, Q to the n. Right. Okay, might be a totally uh, even terms up here. And Zamoy uh gives a formula that allows you, it's an algorithm that allows you to recursively compute these coefficients a n. Okay, and it's it's a recursive procedure to compute. So let, let me try to let me try to convince you that this is what it's doing. So you see that the conformal block appears on both sides of the equality. And let's say you, you so you want to compute this function. So first you know uh, Let's normalize so that the, you have a 1. The first order of 0 is just 1. Then you want to keep going. So basically you have 1. You want, so you want to compute the Q squared term of this. So you have 1 plus. Here you just, in the sum you just take nm equals 1. So you're going to have Q squared. Some explicit constants. No matter what. It doesn't matter at this point what they are. But then, and then here is the block at another special point. But here you can just plug in 1. So to compute... Is this, is this clear? To compute Q squared, the Q squared order, you just will write 1 plus Q squared, some constant, times 1. And then once you've determined uh, the Q squared, you just keep going. So What is the notation here for this, uh, the block on the right? This yes, so the, the main thing is that uh, this, there's this, uh, as a function of P, the conformal block has some poles, which are these PMN. And the recursion involves setting the block, so not at its pole, it wouldn't be well defined, but some, p, you see P, the poles are at P, M, N, and here in the right hand side, the block appears at P minus N, M. So it's like the function at another point that's related to... Is it clear that H needs to have a power series? No, that's the whole point. Is that, uh, this is uh, defined, so it's actually, uh, we look pretty hard through literature, and it seems we did not find any proof that this, the function defined by this converges. And there's a paper by Felder in uh, representation theory which states it as an open problem. So, but on the probabilistic definition, you can actually, so it's not straightforward, but we can actually basically do Gerson of theorem and hold an equality, and you just see it converges. Your theorem is this expectation to yes. satisfy that thing. So the theorem will be, the yeah, and the series converges. I, uh, I have so now <coughs> I have one more definition in physics to show you, but okay, it's also very complicated. But just so you see it exists, is this one comes from maybe you've heard these words, the AGT correspondence, Albe uh, Joto Tashikawa. So this is a pretty abstract uh, idea in theoretical <coughs> physics, but very concretely, what it's, it's doing by giving an equivalence between CFT and these four uh, D gauge theory, it's also giving another way to represent the conformal block. And here you really have, after doing some, up to some prefactor that's kind of doing a reshuffling of the series, then you really have, for this series, you have an explicit expression for each coefficient that's the sum over Young diagrams of some function. So, and it's known to physicists by this proof that you have leave enough that so these two definitions at the level of formal series are equal. But, oh yes, and this is, 
probably one of the easiest case of the non-trivial case of this, what is this AGT correspondence? Is that you can represent conformal block by this or Nekrasov partition function coming from gauge theory. So let's just uh, say this exists and then our, our main theorem is, well, the, this uh, R definition that we have um, the, can be holomorphically extended to uh, so this in here you have to choose q and 0 1 but it can be by uh, so this is a little tricky but by Gersanov theorem you can actually extend it holomorphically to a function of q defined now q a complex number in the disk and it uh, the it, it, it is equal to the series given by the recursion or by uh, the Nekrasov function yeah. It was defined on zero one, and, and yes. Disk, right? mm -hmm. so in fact, it's defined. On disk. And so this implies the convergence that uh, the these power series converge. Yes. Are there uh, questions? Uh, yeah. So coming back to, to what I, I said about how you can choose it. Imaginary, yeah, yeah, sure. Zero That's zero. true, yeah. So it seems like it's the easy case for you. Yes. And um, but from the physics program perspective, you, you just want one surface for which you can calculate, right? So uh, I'm uh, wondering about what is, why do you want to, to have the analytic extension? So the first e question is that if you don't take, well, to prove we have a homomorphic, it's like to prove the series converge, it's better to have a homomorphic function. Like to prove it directly on a positive function, this would be—I don't, I don't know how to do that. And then also in physics, I think the the physicists you also want to view this function as function of Q. It's a—I uh, mean, it's kind—it's uh, one way to think of it is generalization of hypergeometric functions. It's very complicated uh, general. A conformal block is a very complicated generalization of hypergeometric function, and you want to view it as a the Q would play the analog of the parameter of the Z of the. I don't know if it's... another question to come back to the origin of the, of the talk. Uh -huh. So here you have a theorem saying conformal mm -hmm. block well defined uh -huh. and satisfied what the physicist knows. Yes. So everything is called yeah. you're happy. But initially you introduced the conformal block as part of a big formula. Exactly. So this yeah, is... Still, uh, can you prove that this is true? This is, uh, this is our next work we want to do. We, we want want our idea... The physicists say it's true. Yes, yes. And we want to leverage our publicistic understanding to try to prove the you formula. Don't have this form. We have, I, I, I have some slides on this at the end. I, we, are, uh, we have a kind of a formal proof at level of formal series, but we're missing some analytic ingredients to really be able to write a math paper. Okay, yeah, so let's, okay, so there, now I'm going to move on to uh, the proof ideas of how do you prove that this, this is uh, functional equals uh, a series like this. So uh, maybe let's here I'm going to talk a bit more in, about the tools of conformal field theory, which is that when you have a correlation function or a conformal block, there's in specific cases they can obey PDEs. So it's, this is kind of like the solubility of conformal field theory says you have this like whole hierarchy of differential equations that can appear. And in physics language, it's like you have one of your weights has to be a degenerate weight. What's okay, that's their language. But more concretely, it just means that you can have certain observables that are going to be solutions to PDEs. So moments of Gaussian multiplicative chaos can obey PDEs. And by so studying solution space of these equations, you can obtain like non-trivial relations that are precisely the, the uh, then imply the theorem, you, the exact formulas you want to prove on GMC. So. Let me first show you a, a result with the easiest case of this program, which I actually presented this uh, three years ago here, uh, this seminar, so I apologize if you've already seen it, but I'll, uh, this is the easiest, um, the easiest came, uh, case of this strategy, which is much easier formula, is now you just take, you basically had this, this complicated function, remove all the parameters. Now you see there's no more alpha, there's just the easiest field, the y, okay, just y. And you're just computing moments. You just want to compute the moments. So P here is free. Compute the moments of this, uh, this quantity. 
to say it more probabilistically, basically you want to, if you integrate just the GMC measure associated to Y on the unit circle, you have some positive random variable, and the most basic question you want to know is what's its law? Okay, and the law is basically up to constants, it's, power, it's a power of an exponential distribution. Um, so this was conjectured by physicists in 2008, and the way you can do this is, well, you can compute moments, and then once you have moments, they're going to fit into the framework of conformal field theory, and then you're going to be able to introduce an observable that's going to satisfy, here's going to be simple, it's just going to be a hypergeometric equation, and by solving this equation, you're going to be able to show this theorem. And this is really, there, so I should say also, there's a, uh, there's a result by uh, Shaibi Najnidel of last year that we proved this formula, but uh, using, so using random matrix theory, so it's a different, but their method is, uh, yeah, it is more difficult than just introducing the right observable with uh, conformal field that theory. That also solved the question I was going to ask, Fyodorov and Bouchard are in a completely different world. That's true, yeah, they had no idea of these connections. Mm -hmm. So what they did is... They are closer to random matrix theory. So that's true, yes, that's true. Coming from that area. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So one thing is, I should also have said before, is that in these objects, when you t don't have an arbitrary power bird or integer power, then many of these results are easy. This result is trivial. It's just then the non-triviality is how you do the analytic continuation. Because at every fixed gamma, you only have finitely many moments. So it's like these replica tricks that physicists like to do. And actually, I should have mentioned also is that this is how we guess this formula for conformal blocks. Is that there is, in some physics paper, we found that they say when you specialize parameters, you take this to be an integer, they write a Selberg integral, a Selberg type integral for conformal blocks. And then if you see this and you know Gaussian multiplicity of chaos, you just say, okay, I know how to, I can analyze continue in the number of integrals. And then you guess this formula, and then you have to prove that it's well equal to the, to this thing, right? This is, this is how we, sort of how we find, we found this formula. So is this, uh, I'm going to now explain again the, the, so the proof strategy of our main result of the talk is basically following the steps of this, the proof of this result, except it's much, much more complicated because the differential equation you have in this easy case is hypergeometric and uh, in the conformal block case it's going to be a complicated PDE, so this makes things much more technical, but I'm going to explain the proof of this theorem to show you how these things work. And then I'll just say what are, the, again, the differences to the, the, st the main statement we have. So basically here, the observables, to do this case, the observable you introduce is this quantity, which is, uh, on the circle, fix a parameter t in 0, 1. Okay? So I, and introduce this thing that's also called insertion. You, you, you introduce this polynomial, or this fractional power, in your function g of t. And now this thing obeys this uh, differential equation predicted by conformal field theory. And it turns out that after a change of variable, it's hypergeometric. So it like predicts, it tells you like what is the right observable you want to consider so that you land on hypergeometric equation. And you can solve. So once you have the hypergeometric equation, what can you do? Well, you, it's a very well studied equation. You can open a book, you know the solution space, you know everything. And you, it's a two-dimensional real solution space, and you can parameterize your solution space either around as power series around zero, or as power series around one. So around this point or this point. And you have two bases. So you see you have a first basis parameterized by the blue coefficients, and another base co uh, parameterized by the red coefficients. And so if you have two bases for a solution space, then they, they're related by some known uh, identity coming just from theory of hypergeometric equations. And you can, the next part of the proof is by just direct estimates, probabilistic estimates on the observables we, we have, you can identify these constants. So I, I okay, this is basically, I, for this slide, okay, I had math calc is basically the random variable whose law we want to compute. And you can see that uh, C1 and B2, you can show, are both related to a power of this M, but a different one. 
if B1 is not giving information and C2 is zero. And so this gives then a non-trivial identity on the, the M, which then basically is the answer we're looking for. Right? Uh, and this step I put in right here is, this is the, has a flavor of what's called the operator product expansion in conformal field theory. But a level of math, it's just doing, you're just doing asymptotic analysis then on the probabilistic quantity. Right, so. Just uh, p equals uh, zero, you, you, it's one. So you first compute the integral case. You actually, you see, you don't actually. So this proof also reproves the formula for subbreak integral because you don't need it. You just need to know. I can just plug in p equals uh, p equals zero. But then, in, in that case, analytic extension is, is clear. In which case, uh, uh you do integral p, and, and, but then the formula is for any p. Yes. So then let me. Yes. So in, let me explain. The, this is the end of the proof. So it's, once you have this relation, what allows you to do is compute negative moments, which are totally non-trivial. We can't get them from any formulas. And but and then you can check that if you consider the inverse of the the random variable m, it's like determined by its moments. So neg negative moments do specify the law. So therefore, this is sufficient. And you have infinitely many of them. They all exist. So this, this, then this concludes. Wait, so how much time do I have left? There is uh, another seminar starting at 1. So OK, let me do in one minute. I'm just going to say, I guess, uh, so I had been the similar slides, but much more complicated for the conf proving the statement, which is the so first thing you want to do is how do you deform the conformal block? Like, how do you introduce? So in my definition, I introduce, uh, here the parameter is called u. So this is like a deformation that then gives a PDE. But here, instead of having a hypergeometric equation, you basically have a heat equation. It's a PDE heat equation with the time being the modular parameter, the second derivative with respect to this u point you've added, and there's a potential with virus stress function. Um, so this is the solvability of conformal field theory for this case. but we're still, so I have no time for this, but by separation of variables, you can still land on hypergeometric equations, and you can, it's like a coupled system of hypergeometric equation, and you can still solve, we solve every order, um, pretty much. There's end of proof. Uh, okay, I guess I don't have time for this. Uh, then I had a slide to take back, so back to bootstrap, we're still trying to understand this equation. We want to leverage our understanding of conformal blocks to be able to show this theorem. And again, you can deform both sides. What we can do with the bootstrap equation, you can deform both sides with a U parameter, and then both sides will satisfy the PDE. And you can also, so we have these tools, but we're missing an analytic information. Like if we knew this guy was a, the correlation was had a power series in terms of modular parameter, then we would be done. But, so we're still working on this. Yeah, and some, I stated here for the end, some conformal block is really important function to understand better as it, it appears in many of these big, uh, some of these big words I put here on this slide, all these programs in theoretical physics. But more concretely, for our future directions, we want to do, so there's a uh, conformal bootstrap formula and also repeating this on the sphere for a four point sphere. Yeah, I'll stop here. CFT even always does the same thing. We hear the word Virasol mm. algebra, and then it disappears. Yeah. And, you know, already in '94, this was the motivation to start this, looking at this thing. So in this is Zamolochnikov, not the Nikrasov thing. You have you, you have this expo crazy expression. Mm -hmm. which you say come from the di the, the, Virasol, the dimension of the Virasol yes. the representation of Virasol algebra. Great, and then okay, it's unreadable formula, but. With your view of what the, the conformal block is, can you see an, any reason why the representation of the, the Virasol group would be here? Mm, at the moment, no. Do you see any no. visible action of the Virasol group? Uh, you leave your, say something interesting about your conformal block. So I think for this question, there's a work in, uh, in progress. So uh, 
uh, Kupian and his collaborators are trying to uh, study the spectrum of evil theory and to prove the bootstrap equation. And their approach, maybe they can see this, but they don't have their approach. On, so it's not finished yet. But from what I understand, and they don't have a probabilistic definition of conformal well, blocks. You have something on the disk, right? So you okay. yes. connection on the diffeomorphism of the circle. That's the no, we way should. It it. Yeah, we need to look into this. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.